Perfect. So just uh, before uh, launching, I'm really looking forward to the discussion section here um, because of a, a pivot that this uh, study has taken. <clears throat> so just give one brief moment of context for myself, as well as uh, my colleague, Jalyn Ma, who's doing a PhD in computer science at Harvard and is doing, you know, very interesting work, but from a normal perspective. So uh, I had a little bit of an unusual journey that took me to this research. So until uh, 2019, was a professor of art history, a museum curator. So I did a PhD in uh, modern contemporary art history in 2013 and been various places, you know, in between then and now. I decided I wanted to do something different with the second half of my career. So I actually left my academic art history position with one semester left on my tenure clock to go do an MBA at MIT and actually worked uh, with uh, Abdallah's group, I believe, uh, but never actually crossed paths with him and got fascinated by the idea of human uh, computer interaction and crowd coordination because it seemed very similar in some ways to the things that a museum curator would do, which is to basically make arrangements of assets so that the arrangement unlocks value that just, you know, an alphabetical catalog of the assets wouldn't. So following that uh, rabbit hole, you know, now I'm the head of research at Abra, which is a big uh, cryptocurrency exchange based in Mountain View, though still live outside of Boston. Um, it was interested to try to put those two things together. Uh, so Jalyn and, uh, and I, uh, you know, worked up this uh, project. It was kind of like a theoretical ex uh, exploration of how some of this could apply to Dow land, um, and then got a uh, pilot grant from Uniswap, which is by far the largest, uh, you know, Dow protocol entity like this in existence. And a exemplary of the kind of organization we thought that this would not apply to. So <clears throat> I don't know that we're 100% right about that, but there is a little bit of a pivot in terms of thinking about an experimental elaboration here and would uh, just very, very much uh, welcome feedback uh, from the audience, especially since this is my very first academic presentation on a topic that isn't explicitly tied to art. Um, so thank you so much for having me and looking forward to getting started. <clears throat> so in brief, uh, DAOs or distributed autonomous organizations represent a new, a massive new frontier for human uh, interaction and uh, capital allocation. Since emerging in the better in the latter part of the last decade, DAOs have been founded to address topics ranging from fine art to rare disease research, locking up nearly twenty billion dollars at the height of the cryptocurrency market last year. The DAO model, which relies on community voting and deterministic smart contracts to execute collective decisions, has been proposed as a viable alternative for venture capital funds and even the corporation as such. However, a huge gap persists between the nascent multi-billion dollar DAO ecosystem and the deep academic literature on pertinent topics, including distributed coordination, human computer action, the subject matter expertise of basically probably everybody in this audience. So drawing from uh, you know, organ open organizational logics delineated by researchers, including Yochai Bankler, Tom Malone, Michael Bernstein, we offer a new typology of the DAO, one that serves as a baseline for identifying ways that substantial value may be created by better aligning practice with theory. Additionally, we offer a corrective to previous DAO research, which emphasized the, uh, excuse me, which has focused on efficiency of decentralization solely by reference to decision voting. Rather, we emphasize that the power to propose and discover high quality ideas uh, comprises an important complement to the authority to cast a deciding vote in our favor. So, <clears throat> For most of the last century, organizational design has been understood as a cost minimizing function for resource constrained entities. Asymmetries in the cost of searching, contracting, potential for holdup, et cetera, determine whether certain functions were most efficiently located within the boundaries of a firm or procure in the market. These concepts, first promulgated by Ronald Coase in the 1930s, received substantial revision from theorists like Alfred Chandler in the 1970s, who, you know, as many of you are probably familiar, basically said, you know, once you hit a certain critical mass and business size, self-reinforcing advantages take hold, and, you know, things like IBM will, you know, run the, the future of, of planet society. But soon after Chandler's ideas about the ineluctable advantages of large corporations went mainstream, the PC revolution of the 1980s seemed to throw their fundamental assumptions into question. All of a sudden, one could form very large distributed groups that hybridized features of open markets and closed firms into strange new configurations. Delineating the unit economics of coordination and production among such groups, especially as technologies such as artificial intelligence might augment their distributed capabilities, has become a key focus of research. We contribute to this area of investigation uh, by, explore, uh, by linking the work of figures alluded to above uh, to the format of the DAO organization now emerging. <clears throat> DAO-style governance has become pivotal, pivotal for decentralized finance, popularly known as DeFi. DeFi refers to the use of deterministic smart contracts to obviate the role of traditional financial institutions who often collect substantial rents for providing products such as loans or interest-earning deposits. 
As of July 2022, the top five DeFi, DeFi protocols have locked nearly $30 billion, Uniswap nearly $7 billion on its own, approximately 10% of which represents treasury funds as distinguished from user-owned deposits. In such case, a DAO is almost always responsible for aggregating and allocating capital towards the ongoing maintenance of the DeFi protocol. However, the bull market of 2019 to 2022 catalyzed a fluorescence of DAOs dedicated to a dizzy array of events, social, creative, buy golf courses, to bid on an original copy of the Constitution, to collect important works of art, to invest in rare disease research, and to lobby members of Congress. These diffuse organizations collectively manage budgets of hundreds of millions of dollars, provided by tens of thousands of distributed members. Like VC and hedge funds, organizations dedicated to cultural preservation or patient empowerment make many small capital allocations, each uh, with numerous potential options to choose from, in search of one or two discoveries that might move the needle of an entire field. <clears throat> Given the financial stakes and societal ambition here, DAO governance is remarkably under-theorized. In the abstract, DAO configurations bear out numerous features from the crowd coordination literature, but are not narrowly reducible to any such framework. We have a little bit of Tom Malone's Superminds. Uh, we have a little bit of Benkler's peer-based uh, peer production. We have a little bit of other things. We have a little bit of free open source software, but none of it quite applies given the, the voluntariness, the high capital stake, the, the, you know, the complete openness. <clears throat> Such frameworks are foreign uh, to most DAOs anyway, which typically rely only on rudimentary procedures for evaluating and identifying opportunities. The most basic model involves a threshold of ownership represented by token holdings to put forward a proposal, followed by a simple majority of token holdings required for passage. Proposals typically have a fixed time period, yet less than a week, to garner necessary support. DAO members may sometimes be required to propose a kind of snap or sentiment poll to gauge whether it's sufficient appetite to consider the proposal. At larger DAOs, this may take place within a subcommittee. <clears throat> the extent to which such organizations have effectively decentralized their authority has been a focus of prior research, which has often found that DAOs may not be as distributed in their decision making as they might like to believe. Across major DAOs, as few as 1% of wallets may hold up to 90% of voting power. Such concentrations of decision making power also cast their shadow over the process of putting forward proposals. At most DAOs, a single individual is required to hold at least one-tenth of a percent of total token supply to put proposal to a group. This proposal typically limits proposal to less than one in 1,000 DAO members. These high barriers are almost always defended as the only viable means to defend against a barrage of worthless ideas, but their net effect is to narrow the entire proposal down to a tiny fraction of its potential. Major DeFi DAOs with tens of thousands of token holders typically only consider one or two proposals a month, which may be adequate for the goal of keeping the train on the tracks. But for organizations seeking asymmetric impact, a linear process of soliciting possibilities from less than 1% of community members and considering them only one at a time leaves considerable value untapped. <clears throat> Importantly, numerous fields of research have elaborated mechanisms for leveraging the aggregate wisdom of crowds to solve complex, open-ended problems in ways that outperform teams of dedicated specialists. This outperformance typically occurs when design costs far outweigh communication costs, a dynamic that characterizes virtually all DAOs. Although the details vary, one key insight re running through many such approaches is to leverage the same massive set of participants as both the source and the filter of new ideas in a nearly real-time way. For example, the design of crowd, I think I have over here, yeah, the design of uh, crowdsource prize systems has been shown to be remarkably effective at generating surprising solutions to intractable problems or identifying needle in the haystack targets. Notably, researchers specializing in open firm structure have observed that information overload remains a stubborn problem. It is on this point that the authors observe an important convergence of extant crowd coordination mechanics and blockchain consensus mechanisms at the algorithm level. Namely, just as proposing solutions may be powered by the crowd, so too may evaluation and cross-checking. The well-studied firm in Incentive, for example, incentivize con incentivizes contest entrants to evaluate proposals from their peers. If they happen upon a solution that is ultimately picked up by the client, they are rewarded with a prize almost as great as the one given to the author of the winning proposal. Proposals are upvoted with diminishing though still significant rewards given as a consensus favorite emerges. 
the impact of such configuration uh, from the crowd coordination literature may be magnified by deploying other well understood practices from the fields of user interface and interaction design, which is more my colleague Jalin's uh, area of expertise. At present, most DAO interfaces rely on simple box and click interfaces to review and vote on proposals, but could easily capitalize on the capability of mobile forward design to handle information streams. A robust body of literature already exists delving into the ways in which dating apps, for example, condition interaction. Tinder swiping interface may reinforce bias when applied to human intimacy, but serves as a remarkably effective means to quickly evaluate a large pool of binary choices. Numerous tweaks have been studied that foster the acceptance of more deliberative choices or more diverse opinions. Such an interface represents only one of a myriad of choices at the level of interaction design that may permit an orders of magnitude increase in both the quantity and the divergence of proposals, increases that have repeatedly shown salutary effects in the host organization. Taken together um, uh, at the level of both uh, coordination mechanism and interaction design hold the potential to unlock radical transformations to which the uh, multi-billion dollar DAO uh, sector has addressed itself. To adapt a phrase from crowd research pioneer Michael Bernstein, these concepts are poised to permit the DAO to advance from a batch platform to one that is interactive and in real time. And would love to talk about how uh, we are intending to apply this uh, at our, with our Uniswap pilot. So we're currently at the earliest stages of conducting you know, user interviews and needs finding studies and plan to elaborate rolling out one or possibly two of these mechanics uh, into next year, which is uh, gonna comprise uh, one of my colleagues Lynn's uh, PhD chapters probably, and would absolutely uh, relish feedback from the audience of how to approach that problem. Thank you.